Many people look at what circles are on the outside, but they're really missing what's on the inside. Nothing. Well, that is until you add a square and a circle inside, like in this problem, or a shape like this here. So in this video, we're exploring circle length. In geometry problems with circles, it's always a good idea to draw all important radii. Basically, connect the center to all points that are defined on the circle. Well, we'll explore what that means in this problem. That technique is very useful. A circle with diameter PQ of length 10, so radius 5, right, is internally tangent at P to a circle with radius 20. So this circle has a radius 20. So what we're going to do is use this technique. Draw all important radii. This radii, 20. This radii, 20 this radii 20 and those are the important radii i don't mean drawing this is 20 because i mean this is just an arbitrary point it doesn't mean much but a and b those are meaningful points so we have to draw those radii we all that's a good strategy to use in geometry problems so if we know that this length is 20 and the diameter of the circle is 10 we know that this top part over here is 10. okay we're asked to find the length AB, which is also the side length of the square. We construct a square on the larger circle such that CD is tangent at Q, they're touching at one point, to the smaller circle and the smaller circle outside ABCD. So as you can see in the diagram, the length AB is what we're trying to find. Let's just call it S. AB is S, BC is S, CD is S. All the side lengths are S of the square. And just we're asked to find AB, which is just S. So we're just asked to find the length of S. So because it's S, by symmetry, the top part is S over 2, and the bottom part is S over 2 as well. That means this part will be S minus 10, right? Because the total length is S. AD is S. Okay, this is S minus 10, this is S minus 2. This is 20. And this is the right angle because it's well a square. I know what that's calling for. Pythag theorem. And that is why we draw all radii. Because if we did not draw this 20 over here, I mean, how would we even have used it? We couldn't we have no way to solve the problem. So we used s minus 10 squared plus s by 2 squared equal to 400. s squared minus 10s plus or s squared minus 20s plus, plus 100 plus s squared over 4. And the sum is 400. The sum is 5s squared over 4 minus 20s plus 100 is 400. You subtract 100 from both sides, or subtract 400 from both sides, you get 5s squared over 4 minus 20s minus 400 from both sides, so negative 300 equals to 0. And then we multiply the whole equation by 4 fifths to make the first term 0, I mean 1. So 4 fifths, so s squared minus 20s times 4 fifths, which is 16s, minus 300 times 4 fifths, minus 240, is 0. And now we use quadratic formula because this quadratic is not factorable, and also we know that we're looking for a radical anyway. So let's use quadratic formula, negative of negative 16, plus or minus square root of 256, minus 4 times negative 240, which is just plus 4 times 240, right, over 2 times 1. And now you can just simplify this to 8, plus or minus square root of, well, because we divide by 2 to the, this number here, we divide by 4 to numbers inside square roots because the square root of 4 is 2. So this is equal to 64 plus 240. So this is just a plus or minus root 312. And root 312, root 312 is way bigger than 8. So 8 minus square root 312 is not a possibility for sure. It has to be plus. So 8 plus square root sorry, plus square root 304, and jumping the gun a little bit. So the answer is 304 plus 8 equals 312. 
right? Because 240 plus 64 is 304, and then we added up 304 and 8 to get 312. So length of AB is, three, is 8 plus root 304, and answer is 312. Let's summarize the key important fact. Draw the important radii. R, R, R. Even if you don't know the value of the radii, draw them anyways. Because the key thing that a circle tells you is that every point is equidistant from the center. That is literally what a circle is. Every point is equidistant from the center. So the only way to use the property that it's a circle is that draw points that are equidistant from the center. So that means drawing the radii to all the important points. And that is very powerful. And it's even more useful for problems like this one. A machine cutting tool has a shape of a, of a notched circle, as shown. The radius of the circle is square root 50 centimeters. So center here and draw all important radii. We're always going to do that in every single circle problem. Because by not drawing a radii, you could be one radii away from solving the problem or improving your score by six points. So square root 50, square root 50. The length of AB is six and BC is two. The angle ABC is a right angle. Find the square of the distance in centimeters from B to the center of the circle. So this is the center, find BO squared. Interesting. So we've drawn all our radii. We're asked to find this arbitrary distance where this is two. Now there's actually one way to solve this using trig, but let's explore a way even simpler without trig. So the key thing here is square root 50. We have two radii, so we have to somehow find an equation or some information from each of those two radii. The first one, right here, square root 50. Well, again, we could use law of cosines of OB and BC, but there's a better way. We can just drop a perpendicular right here, and then it's just, let's say this is x and this is y. Then we have that x squared plus y plus 2 squared is square root 50 squared. 50. Cool. Okay, that's, we have two variables, one equation. We need one more equation to solve the problem. So maybe let's use the other radii. We've already used this radii. Maybe we need to use the other radii. Also, this is, remember, a good strategy in geometry is to look for information we haven't used yet. That is one of them. So can we maybe use this or this and somehow to get something? Maybe, I, who knows what it will be. So, I mean, this is x, right? So, oh, if this is x, this will also be x then, right? Because it's a rectangle. And that means that we can divide it up even further into six. This part will be 6 minus x. This part can be 6 minus x. So therefore, and we also know because it's a rectangle that this is y. So we have 6 minus x squared. This is 6 minus x plus y squared will be equal to 50, right? That is this triangle here by Pythag theorem. Cool. And let's expand. x squared minus 12x plus 36, plus y squared is 50, and x squared plus y squared plus 4y plus 4 is 50 as well. Okay. They're equal. These quantities are exactly equal. Let's set them equal. We've got x squared minus 12x plus 36 plus y squared equal to x squared plus y squared plus 4y plus 4. Aha! Cancel, 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 cancel. Cancel here. We get 32. Divide by 4 to the whole equation. Negative 3x plus 8 is y. So y is negative 3x plus 8. That is great to work with negative 3x plus 8. So now we can just plug it in to this equation right here. Let's do that. Let's just plug it in x squared 
plus y plus 2 squared, that's negative 3x plus 8 plus 2, this squared is 50. And it's just now a routine algebra problem. 9x squared minus 2 times 3 times 10, which is minus 50x plus 100 is 50. 10x squared minus 60x plus 50 is 0 because we subtract 50 from both sides of the equation, right? And then we divide by 10 by the whole equation because as you can see over there, it's all divisible by 10, every single term. So we divide by 10 to the whole equation, x squared minus 6x plus 5 is 0. We can factor this out to get x is 5 or 1. x is 5 or 1. Can x be equal to 5? Or is it equal to 1? Hmm. How should we know? Or does it even matter for that matter? We're asked to find the square of the distance from b to the center of the circle. So we're asked to find x squared plus y squared. Hmm. Well, the key thing over here is that it actually turns out that only x equals 1 works. Because if x is 5, then we would have that it's not possible to have the radius be square root 50. Because then this is 5, and then this will be 1, and then that means that y will be 7 over here, and then 7 over here. But then that means that this can't be 2. because Square, then this will be 9, and this will be square root 50, but that but the hypotenuse has to be greater than the leg. But the, in this case, the hypotenuse is square root 50, but the leg is 9, and that's not possible. So x has to be 1. So x equals 1, and we can plug it in over here, or over here for that matter, to get y equals 5, right? So x equals 1, y equals 5. We're asked to find b o squared. Well, b o squared is just x squared plus y squared by Pythag's theorem. So 1 squared plus 5 squared equals 26, our answer. A great application of circle length techniques, drawing the radii, then using the Pythagorean theorem. We use the Pythagorean theorem using the, both the radii, and then we also have to use this property that it was 6 by letting this be x and this 6 minus x. And then we solve a systems of equations by noticing that they were equal, so we just set them equal, canceled a bunch of terms, and we're left with this. We plugged it in and solved. These types of problems are really cool because it seems so complex at first. I mean, if we ignore all this stuff, or I mean, it's, it does not seem complex at all, but it seems just out of the blue. I mean, what is this segment? What is that segment? But when you draw the radii, everything makes so much more sense. And that's why I've been stressing this the whole video, this technique which is the most important thing to take away. Draw all important radii from the center of the circle. Cool. Now we're going to talk about power of a point. The power of a point for tangents and secants let us relate length in a circle just like we've been doing. And it's a very powerful tool for solving problems like these ones over here. We'll be exploring power of a point, how to use points to your power in this video right there. Our point, you can watch it 